Be it 7.16 p.m., I call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, November 3rd, 2014. Councilors and guests, just before we begin, I think it's only appropriate that we as elected officials and you as guests that we stand and take a moment of silence in honor of Boston's longest and finest serving mayors of the great city of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the late Thomas Menino. Councilors, thank you. He was a great public servant, not only to the city of Boston, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I'm sure he'll be missed, and may he rest in, in peace. Uh, some of our councilors are unfortunate uh, are not being able to make it this evening, but in any case, we do have a quorum, so uh, we're going to begin. There's not that many items on the agenda. We have about six items. A couple have been before us at uh, a previous meeting and, and sent back to uh, uh, this particular meeting, so we're just going to keep it right. On, in line with the number one through six that we have. And Madam Clerk, let's start with number one. Order appropriation of $12,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, MassDEP, Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant to the Refuge Department Recycling Containers Grant Fund. The purpose of the grant is to purchase recycling bins for the City of Rockton Recycling Depot at 300 Oak Hill Way. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Patrick Sullivan, Refuse Administrator. Good evening, Pat. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening. How are you? Good. Good. Any comments or any? Uh... No real comments. It was a, uh, there's no match needed, and it's a $12,000 grant that we got for some, uh, meeting some performance uh, uh, guidelines from last year. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Appreciate it. And councils, I, I do want to make mention that the city council president did call me this afternoon and he was out of town and was not going to be able to be here this evening because he was not going to be back in time. So that's why uh, he asked me to chair tonight's meeting. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Order appropriation of 140,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, EEA, through the Water Con Conservation Fund Act for the renovation of the Rasco Park site to the City of Brockton Planning Department Grant Fund on behalf of the Department of Planning and Economic Development, Park and Recreation Department in Brockton Redevelopment Authority. There is a 50% match which will be paid from the BRA through the Community Development Block Grant Funds Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Jr., Director of Planning and Economic Development, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, and Robin Jenkins, Executive Director of the BRA. Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, Councillors. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Great. Great to see you. I am here to Great request hit. acceptance of this uh, grant and um, allowing us to move forward with the rehabilitation of Ralsco Park, or the creation of Ralsco Park. Excuse me. Very good. Councillors. Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, thank you. I just have a question. I think uh, for um, Executive Director Jenkins, if you don't mind. Just something just to clarify the, the match. Good evening, Councilor. And good evening. Good evening. So um, ha have the funds already been allocated? They out of are this? appropriated okay. for the uh, two, $280,000. 240, I'm sorry. 140. No, 140. It's two. 140. Total budget is 280. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Total right. budget is $280,000. It is a 50% <laughs> match. We are matching that with CDBG, Community Development Block Grant Funds. Okay. okay. And um, what are the plans for that park? It's mostly just a walk, walking park, green space, okay. uh, neighborhood pocket park. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I, I believe we spoke about this earlier yes. um, the other day. Just has the has that um, other situation been taken care of with regard to uh, some of the property on, on um, there? Or? The best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. It's being worked on. <laughs> okay. All right. And if that ends up taking longer than expected, will that mess us up with these? Actually, it should all? not. Okay. No. Absolutely Excellent. not. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, council. Council, any other questions? Motion Move for recommend favorable. favorably. Motion has been made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor. Opposed goes back to the full city council. Madam Clerk, we go to item number three. Order that the City of Brockton Government Study Committee is hereby established to be comprised of seven citizens of the city, three of whom are to be 
appointed by the mayor, four of whom are to be appointed by the city council president. Each committee member shall be a registered voter and to the extent possible possess expertise or knowledge relevant to the work of such government study committee. The GSC is charged with exploring by whatever means it deems appropriate all aspects of local government organization and structure. The strengths and the weaknesses in Brockton's current form of government in areas for improvement, alternative models of government and recommended, recommend changes in such organization and structure including not limited to the terms of office and the method of selection of officials consistent with the needs of the city and designed to achieve greater efficiency and effectiveness <coughs> in the delivery of government services. Councilors, I know this was um, sent back to us um, from our last finance meeting through city council meeting of last week to return back here. Uh, I believe that was at the request of uh, city councilor at large uh, Stewart. So, um, not being present right now unless he comes into the room in the next few minutes we can either move it and do it to make a motion to move to the end of the agenda pending his, his arrival that's what second. I would say too motion been made and second that we move it to the end of the agenda all in favor oppose we'll hold that until then madam clerk we'll go to item number four order that pursuant to section 23-30 f4 of the city council hereby approves the rule and regulation entitled irrigation outside usage meters adopted by the Water Commission invited Larry Rowley, Acting Commissioner of DPW, Ozzie Jordan, Chairman Brockton Water Commission. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Good evening. Go right ahead. Uh, the only thing I have for you would be, we were talking about the housing, mainly it was up on Oak Street and around the city. We came up with nine uh, places that possibly would uh, be either well or using regular water. Five of them do use wells. There's four that do not. We know two of them do not have uh, areas that they would be irrigating, and two were not quite sure which way it would go. So that's the answer to that particular piece. They're registered wells. Mr. Chairman? Councilor Cruz. So those places that use wells right now for outside would po quite possibly become customers. They might. I we don't know. That's which the options up to them. Which would be an increase in water sales if they. Uh, it would be. I mean, my guess is some of them maybe did wells because they were built when we couldn't give them, <coughs> give them water. Correct. Are they using wells for just outside, or are they using wells for their whole? I believe, just outside, just just the irrigation part at this point. Okay. So going to this, they may make a decision that is cost effective to now, to now become customers on their outside which would lead to an increase in, in selling of water, correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, have you um, or the, um, the Water Commission actually kind of looked into this in terms, because I remember the last time that this came before this council, there was a, some issues of, you know, who's to connect, who's not to connect, uh, whether or not it was going to be businesses, um, homeowners, uh, for-profit, non-profits, has any of those details been scored away so that at least we know um, who actually these clients are going to be? It's open to all members of the community, so whether it's commercial, whether they be profit-making, non-profit, if it's a personal home, a business, everybody, anybody who wants to can apply and uh, come on the system if they like. I also had... Um, you know, voiced some concern the last time that we were here when we were discussing this in terms of, you know, some, um, some assurances, you know, that this whole process isn't going to be abused. Um, has the, uh, the commission or East, East, uh, even Mr. Rowley actually kind of, have you guys looked into that, any of that stuff to make sure that there's uh, even more safeguards that will go along with this, uh, with this process? Yeah, there's a couple involved there. We, we had a meeting on Friday, this past Friday, spent uh, about an hour, an hour and a half, and we talked about the safeguards. We talked about right now the way the system is set up and the way these read it, the meters would read, it would work in that your regular house meter would be first, this irrigation meter would be second, and little arithmetic would take care of that. If somebody's bypassing, uh, part of what would happen is during the annual inspection that would happen, uh, one of our people would be in and looking at the whole system that they have at that point, <clears throat> excuse me. They also have to have a, uh, a plumber actually put this, the, the, the extra plumbing in. We'll put the actual meter in, but the piping that has to be done would be done by a licensed plumber. 
So that's again coming back through our system because they'll have to go through uh, inspection by uh, the city, the other part of the city to deal with that. So there's a few checks and balances in this. Um, hopefully between our reading and the annual inspection, you, the concern that you had that somebody could get around it somehow, uh, we feel that that's covered. And of course there's other, there's fines and what have you that, have, that were ordinances that were put in I think it was a year, two years ago, to, to cover those kinds of things if you're, if you're playing around with the meters, bypassing them, et cetera, so. How? Yeah, that's, that's a separate piece. Um, how comfortable are the um, non-politicians in, um, in the water department feel about this, uh, this whole process? meaning the folks that actually will do the day-to-day -day stuff and the, the supervision, the assurances, how comfortable. Mr. Mr. Rowling, do you, do you mind? Good evening. Um, Good evening. We feel very comfortable with this because we're going to have to do an annual inspection anyway because state law requires a backflow device on anything used on the outside, which plumbing code now is on your outside silcock. It should be a little, we call it a hose bib. It's a backflow device but we will be inspecting this um, once a year, and we can also track their water use through the new system that we have in place now. Yeah. So I feel very comfortable. Okay. Mr. Green, you too? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No more questions. You're welcome, Councilor. Councilor, uh, Councilor Barnes? Yes, um, just to clarify, the information that was submitted uh, about this, the, um, I guess, stipulations here, the fees, application requirement and fees. How much would this cost a resident full from stem to stern with the, um, the plumber, whatever fee that the water department might charge for putting on the, um, the, meter, uh, the meter there, the $10, how much is this gonna cost? The application is a $10 annual fee, so that's every year. Mm -hmm. The plumber, one time, cost hopefully for that would be we had a rough estimate between three and six hundred dollars depending on what they needed in the particular uh, place that they're at each house would be different possibly mm -hmm. so but on an average that's what we came up with and the meters 250 is it 250 for the cost of the meter so. I remember too last time I, I can't remember what the answer was though um, about the company okay are we signing on or having a contract with a company to provide these meters remember we, we spoke about that I can't remember what the outcome was maybe my colleagues can can people go out and kind of get their own no yeah. well a what go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, that, that would be required by the homeowner to go purchase a meter at their cost okay the meter that we have in place now and that also includes the uh, Smart point, which reads the meter. Uh -huh. So the meter itself is probably 105, and the smart point is 130, 135, somewhere in that vicinity. So another 250. And then yes, and then we have an annual fee of $50 to do that inspection and also test the backflow device that's in that house, or business, wherever it is. Okay. So the folks for the well, people that use well, um, I, if I remember correctly, I, I believe. Uh, you gentlemen were kind of nodding your head that the folks were well this would not be something attractive for them to sign on to and, and I, that would make sense because this I, I wouldn't think so because myself I have a well at home and I irrigate so it's a lot cheaper for me to use the well than it would to to purchase and install right what, what, what we're talking about tonight so I, I would say those condo associations will stay on their well but they'll have that option if they want to come on the city water for it. Hmm. Okay, and with regard to misuse, and, and I'm trying to just have recall here, um, Councillor Rodriguez, he went into some detail about how someone could tamper with, um, with this particular device. And what I'm hearing is that there's only, there, there's only gonna be a, uh, like a yearly inspection or something. I, I'm not really confident that besides you know somebody kind of getting tipped off awesome. that you're coming to inspect that they wouldn't it's, be able to tamper with it one of the things when we put in a new system um with the existing meters we get readings continuously all day long from your system mm -hmm. uh to the point that after a certain point in time 
it flags us that you're continuously running water, whatever that is, how much that is. So we would know, that's one way we know if somebody's tampering with the system. We could tell by over the period of time from your use of water, what you normally would use, and what you've been using all along, and then if it varies up or down. I mean, that's very easy for us to see. The reason for putting the, the meter in, the second meter in behind the major meter or the main meter, mm -hmm. so you know all the water that's coming in the house. And then from there, the, the other meter, we do some subtraction to make it work for, uh, for this operation. At first, uh, I think it was said last time that possibly it might have been on the front end. And at that point, Mr. Uh, Council Rodriguez would have been correct. Somebody could have tapped off of that. And right. we, it would have been a little harder for us to tell. But by having the, other, the main meter being the first one it goes through. Okay. And then we have mm -hmm. other systems that pertain to the street and areas that we know, you know, might, might not be your house, but we know in a particular area more water is being used than it normally would. Every time we have a fire, we know how much water is used, you know, those kinds of things. That's how, that's how we detect some of the leaks, et cetera, is by that. And these are meters across the city that, that deal with a much larger area. They're not individual homes or businesses or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Council? Yes. Thank Council you. Councilor Isaac, you had a question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, this could be for any one of you gentlemen. Is there going to be a contract or any sort of, will there be a contract drawn up for the residents since there is an annual fee and I mean, fee. there's a lot of stuff that they're going to be purchasing themselves or? That's the $10 application. Correct. The application itself would be the contract as well as the fee involved with that. So that would be the actual contract that you're talking about. So just the annual fee, I mean, will all this? It, everything would be in there. All the, all the uh, information they would need for this would be with in, as part of that, so. Okay, and how do you plan on um, advertising this to the residents? How is it going in their water? But I think you may have gone over it in the last time you were here, but how are you letting them know about the, this information? We can, there's a number of ways of doing it. We haven't, it, finished the, which would be the most efficient. Um, part of it is putting something in the water bills. Uh, part of it's going just public on a number of things. Uh, we talked about possibly using the bad buses. It just depends on how many dollars, how much extra money we have to be able to, you know, do the, the broad um, advertising we'd like to do across the city for everybody. But we intend to get it out. We put it in the newspaper, of course, and put it on the cable cable, the multiple cable stations we have in the city. And that'd be the basic. We, there are radio stations that service the city, and we hadn't talked about that, but that's another way too. Um, but probably the water bill would be the, the most efficient way, because these are the individuals who would you know, receive it. And we'd, be, we'd, make, we'd know that they'd at least receive the information, so. And what about as far as um, staff in the water department? Will they be able to, will we have to high, have new hires to for this new, for the new meters? We, we'd love to have new hires anytime you'd appropriate the money for it, but That's unfortunately, asking, so no. <laughs> unfortunately, no, we, we have enough staff to, to deal with this at this point in so. time. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you, much. Council. Councils, any other questions or concerns? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed, it goes back to the full city council favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, councilors. Madam Clerk, the next item I believe would be number five. Resolved that the police chief, Robert Hayden, be invited to prepare for the Finance Commission to discuss any and all limitations placed on his ability to work more than 960 hours per year pursuant to the General Law, Chapter 32, Section 91B and C. Invited Robert Hayden, Interim Chief of Police, Martin Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Marion Cruz, Personnel Director, and Philip Mazzarella, City Solicitor. Councilors, uh I did receive a letter here from uh, uh, Director of Personnel Maureen Cruz, and unfortunately she couldn't be here this evening in regards to this matter because of a, uh, another uh, commitment that um, uh, is happening on the same evening. So she did send us a note indicating that. So, uh, Councilors, I know this item has been before us several different times and it's been sent to different finance meetings, so I, I don't know what your pleasure is. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to table us until it becomes relevant. I think Second. Second Motion has been made and seconded that we table this item. All in favor? Opposed, that item will be placed on table at this point in time. We're with item number six, Madam Clerk. 
Resolved that the Brockton City Council expresses to the mayor its belief that the due diligence conducted to date by the city on the proposed transaction and is inadequate to allow for an informed consideration of the proposed transaction and be further resolved that the Brockton City Council expresses its position that no consideration of the purpose proposed transaction shall be undertaken by the City Council without the City of Brockton first obtaining through insuance of an invitation for proposals by the Chief Procurement Officer a detailed financial due diligence analysis by a non-city affiliated independent financial services firm of the fair market value of the Aquaria Water LLC desalinization plant in Dighton, Massachusetts invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Larry Rowley, Acting Commissioner of DPW, Brian Creedon, Water System Manager, DPW, Michael Morris, Chief Procurement Officer, Moises Parente, General Manager, Aquaria Water, Rebecca McEnroe, PE, Project Manager, Aquaria Water. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And I, I will go to yes. first Council Rodriguez because this was his, uh, his proposal to us. Yes, uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Welcome. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Councilor. Since, this, um, the, since I filed this resolved, I um, I've received numerous phone calls uh, from people throughout the city uh, with regards to the Aquaria. And frankly, uh, the vast majority of the people that I've, I've spoken to have expressed their disappointment in, in this city's government, not just in the administration, but in city government. The fact that we've allowed this thing to balloon to this level. Um, most of them have bought homes in the past most of the people I spoke to, they've bought homes in the past for a fraction of what we're talking about here in terms of the $88 million that we're discussing. And yet they know the process. Every single homeowner that lives in this community, unless they're buying the homes cash, they know there's a certain process that they go through in order to, to purchase the, uh, their homes. Um, mm -hmm. but, I, but I honestly... Um, in filing this resolve, I basically do not believe that the city has actually done that. And it's somewhat disappointing to a point where we're willing to saddle the citizens of this city for years to come with uh, a purchase of this size, and yet we haven't done what we need to do to find out exactly how much is this plant worth. Sure. Uh, Can I respond, Council? Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me finish my thought. Sorry? Yeah. Let me finish my thought. Um, we haven't, we haven't really found out exactly, I mean, this plant has been sold since it, since it, was, since it was built, you know, exactly how much it cost. Um, how much was it sold for? Uh, does it have the capabilities? I mean, I've got, I've got a report here from the same folks that are checking the machinery that are also saying, you know, the machinery is in good condition, but they're not quite exactly sure whether or not it would be able to pump or produce the five million gallons that it, it was actually, and this is the same company that's checking the machinery, by the way. Uh, so, in looking at all of this, and we're talking again, uh, a thought came into my mind not too long ago that if this company had asked um, to sell this plant for $250, $250 million, and they had said, oh yeah, we'll settle for 50% of that cost, does that mean the city would be willing to, to pay $125,000 for this plant? That, according to Dighton, is only worth $20 million? Because... Uh, the plant is in the Dighton's books for $20 million. That's what it says as far as the, their um, tax that they're actually, as far as the, the, evaluate, the valuation of that plant according to the town of Dighton is only $20 million. So if it's only worth $20 million in the eyes of Dighton, why is it worth $88 million in the eyes of Rockton? Well, you've raised several issues here, so let me try to go through them all, Councilor. I appreciate your concern in terms of due diligence. I think actually in terms of the type of uh, appraisal that you're requesting in the resolve, I think we would certainly be willing to work cooperatively with the council on that. Um, I will say to you that um, I think it's premature. So I think we need to take a step back and see exactly where we are right now. And you gave the analogy of purchasing a house, which is probably not a bad analogy. Well, where we're at right now, we don't have a purchase and sale agreement. We have a letter of intent that's full of contingencies. And some of the contingencies are related to a couple of the issues that you raised. Um, what we've done at this point 
is we've presented a proposal to the Water Commission uh, as a first step in the process, and we're working cooperatively with the Water Commission and doing a great deal of due diligence. And there is a very lengthy, detailed report that is being prepared for the Commission at this time. I think it's important to note that we have not even asked the Water Commission for a vote. All we've done is present a proposal and begun working on it with them. Um, so at this point, I, I know what your intent is here, Council, and I agree with the intent. However, I think that it's a little early for that. Um, if we do get to the point that we ask the Water Commission for a vote, and if that vote is favorable, then at that point we would be bringing this to the Council. And I would think that when we brought it to the Council, we would be bringing all of the due diligence that had been done up to that point with the Commission to the Council. And then as a body, as you reviewed that due diligence, you would certainly, at that point, it would be your opportunity to do additional due diligence, such as you described here, if you felt it was appropriate. Um, the house analogy, someone purchases a house, they haven't signed a P&S, they sign an offer, and then they go get a home inspection. And I think in essence, that's where we're at in the process right now is the home inspection. Um, we, are, we have brought in our, you know, our consultant, our expert, to look at a number of the issues that, that you described that are valid issues and are covered by contingencies in the letter of intent. But you know, in the private sector, in order to get access to all of those types of things that you're looking for, you gotta get to a letter of intent. There's, there, there's gotta be a, a generally agreed upon price and an, an, an intention on both sides, then they open up for the inspection um, and provide the types of information that the consultant needs in order to advise us properly. So I, I think that's where we're at in the process right now. I, the report's not done. I, I'm, I expect there may be some issues raised. I expect we've still got a lot of work to do, and I don't think we're even close to asking the Water Commission for a vote, let alone be bringing something here to the City Council. So um, I think what I would hate to see us do is have the Council spend money on another report appraisal without having had the opportunity to see the information from the one that's already been commissioned because I don't think you want to go out and spend thousands of dollars and then have us never even bring the proposal forward to the to the council, I just don't think we're at that point yet. I think we, we still have a lot of work to do with the commission. We have a lot of work to do with the consultant. And uh, at the point, if we should ask the commission for a vote, and if that vote should be favorable, then we're gonna bring all the due diligence and the letter of intent to you, and then we'll now work with the council. And then even after the council, if we made it through that far, then we still have to go to the legislature. So. This thing is a long ways away from, from being close to being completed. And I think some of those concerns you expressed are valid. I'm not saying they're not valid concerns, but I think the appropriate time to do that, I would suggest, would be if this thing progresses past the Water Commission with a favorable recommendation, is then brought to the Council. This would certainly be something the Council could consider if they felt it were necessary. But well, Mr. Mayor, in my honest opinion, you've already showed all your cards. They asked for 100 and I believe it's $111 million that they were asking for. And you basically have negotiated at least an intent to purchase this thing for $88 million. When in fact, we have no idea what this, what this plant is worth. That makes absolutely no sense. Why would, why would anybody in their right mind, and I, I have some serious doubts that that plant is worth $100 million because to my knowledge, that plant was sold as a group of six plants and purchased by the current owners. And there are plants all over the world that they actually bought as a group. And this is the smallest out of all the plants. 
there's no way I can actually be convinced that that plant is worth a hundred and something million dollars. And until such time, and, and mind you, let me make sure that I'm a little clear here. I am for the city owning that plant, but not at $88 million. And I'm not against the city borrowing $88 million. So as long as the $88 million doesn't go to the folks at Aquaria, but more possibly in terms of buy-in and fixing the pipes that we are actually running those waters through and making the quality of life in, in, of Brocktonians a little easier. But again, going back to the plant, I, I will sit here and no matter what anybody says, because you know what? Reports can be skewed one way or the other to satisfy our needs, but there's no way I can sit here and agree with, the, with that purchase price and the value of that plant, that it's value. If Dighton, according to Dighton, it's only $20 million. I have it. It's the, the, the valuation of, um, of the plant in Dighton is $28 million minus, or, minus the equipment. So if Dighton is saying that the plant is only worth X dollars, why are we saying that it's worth Y dollars? Right. I think that's a little misleading, Counselor. The $20 million figure is strictly for the real estate, does not include all of the machinery, the 16 miles of pipeline, the soft costs of permitting that 16 miles of pipeline, uh, the machinery is tax exempt in a plant like that. Uh, so I think that's not really a fair picture of the whole thing. I hear your concerns regarding the value. And again, I think as we bring that report forward, I think what makes this transaction a little bit different than if we were just hanging around saying, hey, let's go buy a water plant, is that we have a very large long-term obligation to these folks, $6.3 million this year. Every month, we are sending a check for over half a million dollars to a Spanish company that's owned by a Korean company for the right to purchase water that we don't need. That's the deal we find ourselves in today. Um, so I think that in terms of uh, the value, um, I think that uh, we have to look at this also from the standpoint as to what we're committed to going forward. There are some valid issues regarding Right now it's pumping three and a half million gallons a day. What does it need to pump the five million gallons a day? That's covered in the letter of intent in the contingency. We have protection against that. There's a question about what about the possibility of the effect of the railroad on the pipeline. We have a contingency to cover that. And these are all issues that we're, there, we're exploring as we go through this process with the independent report and as we work with the commission. So. Again, I think you're raising valid issues. I think it's all open. There's no secrets here. Um, but I think that right now we're at the point in the process where you know, you're know, you deciding what you think the council should do. We haven't even brought it to the council yet. We haven't, we haven't even got that far in the process. So uh, you know, again, if and when this thing gets here and the council feels that they would like this type of independent appraisal, we'll certainly work cooperatively with you on getting that done for you. I just, I just honestly feel that, you know, we've seen this, this process in this city before. It, just down the street at Brockton High School, there's a nice little stadium there. That this whole discussion, how it's gonna, it was gonna do this, this, and this in the city, and it hasn't materialized, to be honest with you. But when, you, when, you, when we're talking about this kind of a purchase, the reason why everybody is up in arms about it, or at least everybody is kind of, it's here, we're discussing it, is because it's being presented as a solution to the $6.3 million. And I agree with that. Which we turns into $7 million next year. That it, could tr it could turn into $9 million. I'm just saying it makes no sense for the city to be dishing out this kind of resources without getting a single drop of water. But purchasing a plant, and when you're looking at $88 million, you buy a plant for $88 million, and I think you said it yourself that the payments would be on the note would be around five and a half million. Between five and five and a half, depending on the final financing. But we have absolutely no idea what the operating cost is. Oh, no, we have some data that was already provided to us during negotiations. But that's, again, Counselor, that's the due Mr. diligence that's being Mayor, done now. Mr. Mayor, that's what that's I'm saying. That's the report that's being done by CDM Smith now 
is not only to look at what the operating expenses have been, but to also look at what they project the operating expenses to be under several different scenarios. So that's that's the type of information absolutely we're going to look at with the Water Commission. But that's that why, but that's why we're you. here discussing this because when somebody hears five and a half million, two and a half to three million dollars worth of expenses, of running expenses, operating expenses, where's the savings? Right. And you that's know? why so, and all that's that work why, is being done. And that's why you know, a lot of us are concerned about this right. because now we own the plants. It's costing us $8 million to produce the water, five and a half right. plus $3 million. And then all of a sudden... I think there's a little more to the equation than that, though, Council. There's the value of the water that's produced, my, the cost my, of water that we would have bought from Silver Lake, my, and my that's why we're looking at the different scenarios. My mathematics from Brockton High School in adding five and a half Plus three millions is eight million dollars. Yeah, I don't believe well, it, we we don't know what that final number is. That number that's being gleaned from it from a um, from a state report uh, includes a big chunk of depreciation in there, which is not really an operating expense. I think the reality is the plant has not been operated exactly in the manner that we would. For the vast majority of the time, the plant has been operated almost the entire time. It's been operated to pump three or four hundred thousand gallons a day into the brook, um, with not making any sales to the city without generating any revenue for that water. We have made a couple of short-term purchases. Um, I made one since I've been mayor because we wanted to take it for a ride. I wanted to see if it could produce the three and a half million uh, that they said it could. Um, but in terms of taking out of context operating expenses you know from state filings i think that the type of research that's being done for the commission right now uh, will be far more detailed and far more accurate it will look at the cost of producing water at different levels of production what the value of that water is to the city what's the offset in cost of if we're taking a million or two million gallons a day less from silver lake we need to factor that in. And quite honestly, Council, I'll tell you, I, I don't know the answers to those numbers. I don't know what those numbers are. I'm looking forward to seeing the report also. So, I mean, I think we're working very closely to do the due diligence to get this information in front of the commission. And if at some point we're all agreeing that it's favorable, then it will be brought forward to the council and the council will certainly have the opportunity to order this appraisal or any other due diligence that that you feel is appropriate. But don't you? I'm not against doing this. Well, that's what I'm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But why wait until that time? You know, when you've got all this work that's already been done, why is it? Why can we do that simultaneously in the sense just to get so that some of us and the taxpayers in this community could rest assured that their future dollars are not being you know, tossed out the windows in the sense. Nothing's been, the only money being tossed out the window right now is the half a million dollars a year that we're sending to Aquaria every month for absolutely nothing. That's for the right to, shouldn't say for absolutely nothing, for the right to purchase water that we don't need. I mean, I, I find a lot more people are up in arms about over $6 million this year, you know, $20 million over the last four years for the right to purchase water we don't need. So we're exploring this with a great deal of due diligence. I did not believe that sitting back and continuing to do nothing and just write larger and larger checks to this company, I don't think that made any sense. And so um, in terms of the concerns of the ratepayers, um, you know, we made it a point to bring this proposal forward to the Water Commission in a public meeting so that you know, there's no secrets here. It's a transparent process. And I think we've worked very openly with the Water Commission. We're in full agreement of the study that they asked to be done, and it's being done. So all I'm saying is, let's get a look at the first study before we order the second one, that's all. But what I'm saying to you, Mr. Mayor, is the fact that you've, you've already basically sent a letter of intent for $88 million for a plant that we have no idea how much it costs. Well, I wouldn't say we have value. no idea. We have no idea. Can you tell me how much it's worth? 
No, we have we know what it costs to build it. Well over a hundred million dollars to build it. Um, we know what the book value of it is on the books of the company that holds it now, which is over eighty nine million. We certainly have some frames of reference. And again, counsel, I just remind you, we also are looking this. We're not looking at this like we decided today to go out and shop for a a, a desal water plant. We're looking to see what options may exist that would be a better deal than the bad deal that we're stuck in right now and we're stuck in for another 14 years. And it's 6.3 this year, it's seven next year, and it continues to go up. By the end of the contract, it projects to be up around $10 million a year. We have an obligation. Uh, right now we're under a consent decree from the state to maintain a second source of water. So even just letting this contract run out you know, it still leaves us in a position 14 years from now to have it a re-up for another contract or go get another source of, uh, of water. So, I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything you say, Councilor, in terms of wanting to establish what the right price is. We've entered into a letter of content that has a number of contingencies in it, addressing many of the issues that you've raised, but you don't get to the point to be able to do the type of thorough, full due diligence that we want to do on this without getting to a letter of intent first. And then we'll work with there looking at various scenarios with the commission. And as I say, we haven't even had, we have not even asked the commission for a, a vote. So I mean, uh, we've got to get way past that point with the water commission before we're even bringing this to the city council. Uh, Mr. There's a long ways to go here, Mr. Council. Mayor, I, I agree with you 100% in terms of you know, not paying a query or what we've been paying for all these all these years and continue to pay that for absolutely just to have access to their pumps. But what I'm saying to you, and I'm gonna keep on saying this, to me, I think, uh, and Mr. Condon said this in the paper, that it was a little pre premature for the council to ask these, these kinds of questions. I don't think it's premature because you sent a letter to the company saying we agree at, at this $88 million price tag. Subject to Subject a number to a bunch of contingencies. Of stuff, but you, right. you think a that whole the plant, bunch of contingencies. But you think that the plant is worth so, $88 million. So let's get back to the house example for a minute, Council. Then, so someone buys a house, they really haven't had a chance to tear the thing apart and see what its real condition is and what it might need for work and what potential issues might come up. So you bring the home inspector in, you do the home inspection, if the home inspector finds problems, you don't continue with the transaction. You either go back and renegotiate the deal or you walk away from the deal. So, I mean, I think, you know, you brought up that example of buying a house. I think we're at the home inspection stage. We're not on a purchase and sale agreement. We haven't agreed to buy anything. We've agreed on a letter of intent that we would intend to buy subject to a number of contingencies. So I think all I'm saying to you, I get the point you want to do an independent appraisal. That's great. I've got no problem with that. All I'm saying is let's get the home inspection done first, see if we're even still in the deal. And if we're still in the deal and we're bringing it forward to you, we'll go get the appraisal. We'll, we'll do it in, and we'll cooperate with this council on any and all due diligence uh, that, that you deem appropriate. I understand that this is potentially a, a very large um, you know, transaction for the city, and we want to, you know, proceed with great caution. Mr. Mayor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on saying this. My whole thing is that I think you showed your cards, and there's no way now that Aquarius is going to come back and say, well, you know, how about $60 million? Because you've already said to them, that you're willing to pay $88 million for. Now, at the same time, this is also an organization that we all know has not kept up with their side of the agreement that they actually signed with the city because we all know that they were supposed to do. The gentleman from Aquaria was here with the guy that has the same name as I do, but you know, he was basically standing here saying, we keep losing money on this particular project. It's a losing venture. We've lost money, we've lost money. At, this, at the same time, we know that within that contract, they were supposed to spend X, Y, and Z dollars every year to advertise for services 
advertise for the water that they were supposed right. to be They were producing. supposed to spend, And they haven't done any of that. They were supposed to spend $250,000, I believe, during the first three years of operation. They didn't do that. I do not believe they did it, no. Okay, they didn't and, do that. And, Council, you can rest assured uh, that that was mentioned numerous times in negotiations. Uh, you can rest assured that the threat of litigation was brought up numerous times uh, in negotiations. So I'm, and yet they're I'm settled. They want, they want us to buy it for $88 million. Oh, no, I think they wanted us to buy it for over $100 million. I think that we have a tentative purchase price of 88, subject to a number of contingencies, and a lot of due diligence that still remains to be done. Well, you know what? I we're not going anywhere in this deal right now. We're working with the Water Commission, and we're waiting for a very lengthy, detailed report that you know we will bring to the commission when it's completed. We'll make it public, and we'll share it with the council. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I'm going to yield to some of my other council members, the, the members of the council here to ask their questions if they have any, and then I've got a couple other ones that I, okay. I like to touch okay, bases council. on. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any uh, Council Bonds? Uh, just one thing, not really a question, I guess through the chair um, yes. to Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, while you all were talking, I was just kind of listening and, and doing a little bit of research about the value of a plant like this in Dighton and uh, the surrounding areas, and a, a report came up. I'm actually trying to find it back again. It came up and it actually, um, it, it spoke about a particular incinerator, a trash incinerator in Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. And Brockton, they, they tried to equate Brockton buying the plant to this particular situation in Harrisburg. And I just kind of started reading it a little bit and it ended up being a $125 million situation for this incinerator and it almost bankrupted um, the city. And I, I just kind of want to put out, and that's why I'm doing this kind of through the chair so that uh, uh, Council Rodriguez can maybe, and, and also you, Mayor, as well, in your due diligence, maybe take a look at that as well. I mean, I, again, I'm just, this is just all right here while I'm sitting and listening. But if that's something um, that we need to maybe review and just kind of take a look at how other cities have uh, dealt with situations on its face that look like this, this is something that we need to look at and just making sure that all due diligence is, is done, because if we don't, you know, of course, we don't learn from history, we're doomed to repeat. Well, I, I agree with you, Council. That's, I think, the point I've tried to emphasize, that there's a lot of due diligence to do. It's being worked on now, and let's, let's see where it leads us. Uh, you know, we haven't, even, we haven't even brought this a request for a vote to the Water Commission, let alone bring it here to the Council. So, there, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to remaining and, and plenty of due diligence to be done, and that independent report that's being prepared right now is the you know is going to contain a lot of information that i think will guide us in the right direction what's the company doing the independent report cdm smith okay and that's the one that says that um it indicates that although the plant is in very good condition investment in the infrastructure is necessary to bring the plant to an operating capacity of five million gallons of drinking water per day correct and that's the issue that i was ref one of the when i was uh, speaking with Councilor rodriguez right talking about the contingencies uh it's it's well disclosed uh, prior to the letter of intent that right now it produces three it can produce 3.5 million gallons per day it's designed to produce five million gallons per day but there are some infrastructure improvements that must be made to get it five million to five million per day. And there's a contingency in the letter of intent that says either they get it up to five million gallons a day and we get to test drive it with our own engineers, or we establish what the cost is to get it to five million <clears throat> using our own experts, and that gets deducted and held in reserve from the purchase price. So clearly, Everybody acknowledges that there's an issue on the production between the 3.5 and the 5, and that's why there's a contingency on that issue, one of many contingencies in the letter of intent. Okay. As and, I say, and, we're not even on a purchase and sale yet. This is simply a letter of intent. Two parties saying they'd like to do a deal subject to, subject to, subject to, and you know now we're going to work our way through all of that stuff. Well, I, I do have to say, if you just give me a little bit of leeway, I do have to say that... Um, I'm on track with um, Councilor Rodriguez and what he's trying to say because initially when, when the discussion started about a possibility to buy this plant 
it was almost like a panacea. It was like, it's the best thing we could ever think of. We won't have to do this. We're going to save this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And even just what you said just now, how I heard what you just said about the infrastructure um, requirements and things ne needing to kind of happen with that, it sounds like you're saying, we're still going to buy it. That's the bottom line. We're going to buy it. But you have to do this first. And I don't know, I mean, that I'm trying to, Kind of, I'm trying to follow what Councilor Rodriguez is saying. It, it, it still sounds like we're being obligated to buy this thing. Oh, wait. There's no purchase and sale agreement. No, no, no. Just because there's no We're agreement, yeah. it sounds, the words sound like an obligation that, and I, I'm, not, I'm not indicating that anything was done or anything, but I'm no. just saying it just sounds like these people are holding out for us to buy it, that there are no other buyers. We are going to buy it. We all just have to be convinced no, I, I that don't, it's a good idea to buy I it. I don't think they're holding out for us to buy it, Council, because they have us tied up in a contract that's paying them millions of dollars per year. So I'm, I'm not sure what their mindset is. Um, I think that it has not been a great investment for them. It's not a good contract for us. That's why I think you've got two sides willing to sit down and, and try to make a deal. Um, I think, again, what makes this a little bit different is that we have a very large obligation to them. If we do nothing, we're giving them $6.3 million this year. Next year, if we do nothing, we're giving them about $7 million. The year after that, we'll give them about $7.5 million. Well, who's the to number say that keeps the escalating. Who's to say that the, the projected operating costs won't be that anyway oh, they, on us? So clearly, Council, that's why we're doing the study that we're doing, and there is no obligation. I'll tell you quite straightforwardly, if the report comes back unfavorable, we'll walk away from the deal, we'll renegotiate, we'll, we'll work with the commission on what the best direction for the city is. But we haven't seen that report yet. It's still being worked on, and that's all I'm trying to express here with this resolve is that you know before we go running out for the appraisal that's going to cost us more money let's let's see what the home inspection says let's let's see what that report says and we'll all get a look at it and then we'll decide what the best direction is to go from there um, but I'm I, you're right I do put it in the context of this mammoth obligation that we have to them that we're paying I I see that check go out every month over half a million dollars a month of the ratepayers' money going to Aquaria for the right to buy water we don't need. We're searching to find a better deal here, but we're doing it in the open, working with the appropriate city boards. We're working with the, the Water Commission right now, and if that does become a favorable recommendation, then we'll be here in front of you working with you on this. And as I said to Councilor Rodriguez, you'll have the opportunity to do any and all due diligence you feel is appropriate. So you'll order an appraisal, you'll order your own consultant you'll you'll do whatever you feel is appropriate and we'll we'll work cooperatively with you because without the council's approval we're not going anywhere with it yeah, and, and just one more thing I just want to make make it clear for myself um, and I appreciate your position about you know we're sending half a million dollars a month, a month. And check is going out and it's going to these people and for, you know trying to for a right to purchase water we don't need right now right and so the 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 translation or I, I guess the trickle down kind of um, breaking it down, the idea is that we would save money um, buying this, but technically that's not the case. We may end up having to pay these same, uh, these same figures, but for a different thing or to a different thing. So it's not necessarily, buying this plant does not guarantee us any kind of savings, correct? Because we're, we don't know. Be we're waiting to see the numbers. Can I today tell you it guarantees you X amount of savings? No, we're waiting to see what those projected expenses are, but also what's, what's the water that's generated and what's the value of that? I mean, maybe there's a scenario where it comes out about the same when the plant is running generating 2 million gallons a day of water to us. Well, then I would say, well, if it's the same money we're spending anyhow, but now we get 2 million gallons of water, that's a better deal than what we're doing right now. Well, I'm gonna find yeah. that article too, because when I was reading it, it did say something about um, uh, Desal water is kind of obsolete too. Like it's it's not really a necessary well, I, form of water use yeah, or something. I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll yeah, read that. I would through. disagree with that statement. I think there's, I think most folks feel that there's going to be a growing demand for water in the region as the economy comes back, 
as many towns around us want to have growth, but they don't, they don't have any additional water. <clears throat> I think it's very reasonable to expect that towns around us will have a, a need for water. I think it's reasonable to expect that industry could be attracted to the city that needs water. But these are the scenarios we're gonna look at as we go through the data from this report and decide what the best route is to go with this. I think it's about the, um the distilled water or something. Okay. something about one the of kind the, of water that one of the like scenarios, a, Council, would be a, a regionalization of the water, and that's one of the, the scenarios we're looking at, too. There's an interest in surrounding communities to regionalize the plant because they know they're going to need more water in the future. What, okay, what, what's your, what's your plan B if this report comes back really negative? Oh, I think we've got plans B, C, D, and E, and we're looking at all of them. I mean, and everything from buying it and mothballing it, buying it and operating it at different levels, uh, looking at regionalizing it with the state or with other communities, creating a regional water authority. So the plan B is to, to still buy it. To walking away altogether. No, I said A, B, C, D, E, to walking away altogether. Okay, but what's plan B? Like, what, what's our next step? I, I, we have I, to see, I'm really nervous about this asked, kind of like, well, we haven't done we're going to wait yet. and see approach. We're, we're waiting to see what the data is yeah, that, that comes in from the report. And we're, we've asked them to look at several different scenarios. What do the numbers look like at 1 million gallons a day? What do the numbers look at at 2 or 3 million? What do the numbers look like if we keep a million gallons and sell a million gallons? I mean, there are all different scenarios, and we really need time to look at that data that's not in yet. Okay. Uh, Actually, I'm sorry, just one more, if you don't mind. Um, okay. Attorney Nazarella, would it be inappropriate for the council to maybe be privy to some of, I, I guess, just some of those things that, that are coming up, or not negotiations, but yeah. it's, it, would that be inappropriate for us to know that and just not kind of get a, a report, like uh, um, Council Rodriguez said, that might be skewed no, to fit you'll, a particular you'll, philosophy? We're gonna, whatever the report is that comes from the consultant, everything we get, you'll get. There's... Nothing, nothing in between. Okay. But I'll I'll defer to the attorney. Well, I don't think the the, the question is it wouldn't whether or not it would be appropriate or inappropriate. It's really within the uh, the executive authority to be at this stage of exploration, <coughs> uh, dealing with terms, setting uh, the stage up, for which, as the mayor I think has repeatedly said, mm -hmm. he would then bring to the city council. But it's not a collaborative effort where you bring in the city council, you bring in the mayor and the administration. And, but uh, there will be the point where everything will be fully disclosed to the city council. And if the city council, for some reason, is not in agreement with the facts and figures that have been brought forward, mm -hmm. then they would be invited to take their own course in that. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Stewart, you had a question. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, yeah. first of all, my apologies for arriving late here today. I got my uh, Mondays mixed up I, in my head. I thought it was an 8 o'clock Monday. Um, I have a question for the mayor, actually. So, nice, of you, nice of you to join us, Councilor. Yeah, an hour late, but on time, <laughs> in, my, in my own mind. Um, <laughs> In principle, I support what you are attempting to do here. I mean, I don't think, I think it's prudent to go through a discovery process and see what the options are and then you know, follow the data. So I, I don't have a knee-jerk reaction in opposition I, to I this. wish I'd come up with that phrase, discovery process, about right. 20 minutes ago, because that's a pretty good one. <laughs> um, so I, I'm supportive until we you know, learn differently that we should take a different approach. I, the, and the reason why I'm most supportive of trying to figure this out and thinking an acquisition may be the best way to go is, and I, this may be a question for you or for the chief financial officer, is that we're in this contract and then at the end of the contract we still have uh, the remainings of this dissent decree. And so we've paid all this money to Aquaria and then after that contract is over with, we have to come up with some other type of solution. And I'm not sure we know what that solution looks like or what it would cost. And it seems to me that if we were to purchase the plan and it made sense financially, we have answered that question about what we do next. Um, so to me, that's the, the sort of the predominant issue in my mind of why this process makes sense. But I don't know what the answer is to that question. So what, what are plans after the contract? If um, Has the city, has the administration thought about that at all? Yeah. I, so, Councilor, and I know you missed part of the discussion, but really, Right now, we're doing that discovery process with the Water Commission. 
We're waiting for the report that's been commissioned to come back. It is a very complex report that's being prepared for us. There's a lot of work to be done on it for them to bring back all the information that we're looking for. All we've done is entered into a letter of intent right now. We haven't signed a purchase and sale agreement. There's no deal to purchase the plant. I guess there's, my question is actually- There's a proposal to purchase the plant. Well, I, I just want to clarify. So in the request for the report, and Jay can probably help with this me more, we've asked them to look at a few different scenarios as to what do the numbers look like if this? What do the numbers look like if that? So that we can get an idea what our options would be and do those options make sense for us? And if the options don't make sense for us, we'll never ask the Water Commission for a vote and this thing will never get to the council. But I think that we're obligated to, to do this discovery and do this due diligence because in the meantime, if we do nothing, we're going to pay Aquaria a lot more than $88 million over the next 14 years for the right to purchase water that at least today we don't need. So, Michael, I, I think I have a good grasp of that. Okay. So, ex, so Maybe I missed the question. Yeah, so excluding the entire conversation of purchasing Aquaria. Okay. Uh, as we are presently, mm -hmm. what was on the table for the administration? What were, sure. what were, what were the plans after the contract concluded? What were we thinking of doing next before this became a part yeah, of the discussion? That's a good question, Council. The, the contract itself has an anticipation that it can be renewed at the, at the city's option in five-year increments up to 50 years. The premise for that is that this administrative consent order that the city is operating under will continue, that we'll, we'll always have an obligation to have a, an additional source of water other than the Silver Lake and the small amount we can get from the Avon Reservoir. The reason for that is because of the concern the state had upon of the effects of the excessive demand on Silver Lake and the anticipation that over time the Brockton water demand would grow. So as we reach at the end of the contract, we have as our option the right to extend it in five-year increments. At the time we do that, the price that it's extended at is open for renegotiation because the 20-year contract will have allowed Aquaria to recover some portion of its fixed capital investment. Some portion of that may be remaining to be recovered or it may not be, you know, we'll know that at the end of that time. And in addition to that, there may be a need to do renewed capital investment in order to serve the city. So that is the option A, which in the contract, probably a different price, but it is anticipated that it's essentially a permanent, a permanent solution because the requirement for the consent, imposed by the consent decree requires a permanent solution. It offers, whether owned or under contract, an additional benefit to the city that that plant does, whether it's ours or under a contract, because it provides for the city redundancy to a substantial amount of capacity uh, in our water supply system. So if we have a disaster at Silver Lake or the transmission mains coming from Silver Lake, we have the capacity to replace a significant portion of that by the capacity of this plant. So that's one reason you would think that we'd stay in the contract. However, at, as we get to the end of the contract, we may wish to pursue whether other options exist for an additional source of supply, if not the Aquaria source of supply. When we did the initial uh, Aquaria contract, the biggest constraint we faced was the requirement in state law that you exhaust all of your in-river basin alternatives for water supply before you seek to go out of the river basin. The problems we faced then will exist in five years or 20 years, which is that we're at the beginning of the Taunton River Basin. So the supply south of here is much greater than it is right here where you've just got the Salisbury River beginning mm -hmm. to trickle down, uh, down to become the Taunton River. So we don't really have good in-basin alternatives. There aren't a lot of external basin alternatives. We have explored moving water from our basement, basin to Silver Lake for treatment and then pumping back here. Uh, that was never able to get permitted because of the degradation that occurred under those scenarios to Silver Lake. There was the alternative of connecting to the MWRA. Uh, that option may exist in the future as well if we choose to exercise it, but you'll be picking up a new capital cost at that time. 
doesn't mean it's not an impossible, it's an impossibility, but it's the kind of thing we could, could look at in, at that time. But I really think at the end of the day, we will either be using this desalination plant under contract or under, or under ownership. Councilor Rodriguez, Rodriguez's concerns are, is the purchase price excessive? I mean, I think, it, you know, have we done what we needed to do to determine that that's the best price we can get for that plant and is it a good price? That, that's a fair question. I don't, I don't think anybody would dispute that. I still think that at the right price, and I think 88 at the moment is probably the best we can do, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't pretend to know all the answers to that, Councillor. But at the right price, the ownership of the plant is the better way to go because it gives us greater control over, over our own destiny. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe we can do better than 88 million, but I think at the end of the day, one or the other, ownership or contract of that desalination plant is the right way to go. Reason is, the pipeline is constructed to provide 10 million gallons of capacity, the actual pipe itself. The concerns about the pipeline have not to do with the diameter of the pipe, but you know where it crosses the railroad essentially. And the plant itself is on a parcel of land which could be expanded to get to 10 million gallons. So it looks to me like, and you know, the water supply is the environmentalists don't like to hear it, but basically it's the ocean because you, you're treating brackish water as it comes up, this, uh, up the Taunton River down there in Dighton. So we have, I think, as much water as we'd ever need uh, at that site. It's now only a question of cost, and do we find that the uh, letter of intent provides a fair approach for the city or not? The letter of intent to Councillor Barnes's question is really it outlines a process by which we gain um, access to information and make a decision to, as to yes or no. It can't occur without a favorable vote. The purchase cannot occur without a favorable vote of the Water Commission. It cannot occur without a favorable vote of the City Council. It cannot occur without the authorization of the City Council for borrowing, which is a two-thirds vote of the City Council. So the power lies with this body and it's at the end of the day to say yes or no to the transaction or Maybe, because we don't like where we are at this point. I don't have any problem with any of that. And finally, if all of us say yes, we still need to get the approval of the, uh, of the uh, state legislature. And one of the things that's being, will they be asked for approval is a purchase and sale agreement. We haven't, we've got a first draft of that, but we haven't even begun to negotiate its terms because the terms ought to include resolution of some of the questions that Councilor Rodriguez is, is, is asking. So that, I, I hope I've answered your question on it that. It does. I, it just makes me think that. And so there really are two questions here for, for me. It's one is within the confines of, you know, to use this real estate analogy. So we're renting right now. We're trying to determine if we want to, to own the place. Um, so that's one question. And then the other, outside of this rental agreement, you know, what options do we have? Yes that maybe we don't want to buy this place at all because we have other options out there, or maybe we don't, which is why we... So whenever you guys put your assessment together, I think answering both of those questions for me would be very useful. It yes, may be useful and, to my and colleagues. And you know, each of the members of this body has a right to get comfortable with the questions which are put in front of it. You have a right to the information that gets you to that point. I don't, I don't dispute any of that. The, just one comment on the newspaper uh, comments of Premature. They have nothing to do with your obligation or right to obtain information. The only thing I meant by that, Counselor, was that to spend money on another study at this point, I think, is premature because we're still in the beginning phases of the first study. But I have no problem with your getting information that you need to get, uh, get to a decision, yes or no, whichever your conscience and your mind gets you to. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Counselor. Counselor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to, um, uh, to ask you if uh, one of the questions that... Um, Not the same question now. Huh? Not the same yeah. question. Uh, no, a different question. Different. Uh, one of the questions that you asked, because um, you said that you basically, you know, you've asked um, CDM to ask a series of questions to try to get the answers that we need to answer before we make a, an educated decision on this particular thing. No, not questions. I think that what we've requested is that they look at the costs of operating the plant under different scenarios. Okay. Is one of the questions that should have been asked, was asked, exactly how much these folks paid for that plant? Is that a question that was asked? 
So we have an idea. Let me let me have Jay handle that one. So we have an idea, basically. I mean, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come back to this 88 million dollars because right. just because they're saying that their plant is worth 120 million, 190 million, two you know two billion, it doesn't mean it's worth that. No, it, does, it doesn't that mean that, Council. The, they're the, basic. The, I'm sorry. The answer to your question is, we know what the Korean company paid to buy the Enema division of OHL. We know what that price was. I, f I forget the exact amount, but we know that. For all of their purchases. Yes, we do. What we don't know, and the question was asked, is whether there was a specific allocation of that purchase price to any of the particular assets that they acquired when they acquired Enema. And what we were told is there was no specific allocation. That what was paid by the Korean company was a payment for this division and the assets it controlled without a specific allocation of the purchase price to those specific assets. Now, within this, the, the uh, confines of the state of Massachusetts, the Aquaria plant, the Aquaria entity, which is now owned 80% uh, by Enema, uh, by the Korean company and buying Enema, has made a report annually to the state of Massachusetts as to what it has spent in creating that plant in terms of construction, machinery, permits, and what the uh, depreciation against those assets has been. That's a public filing. We know what that number is, and that's what the mayor was representing is over $100 million at the beginning and down to less than 90 at this point. We know those numbers. Those are submitted to the state under pain and penalty of perjury. But what it, what that asset would have been worth to, say, a Korean company which was buying it and all of the other assets for strategic and commercial purposes in order to earn money by water sales and contracts and access to markets that it now otherwise wouldn't have had is different from what a municipality would value it at because we're not buying it for purposes of selling water to all of Massachusetts. We'd be buying it for purposes of what are the assets that we're acquiring and are they fairly valued. So in um, determining whether the 88 million is a fair price, to answer the question that's in your resolve, uh, there's, you know, again, I don't really have a, a problem with engaging another party to say, is that a fair allocation of city resources to this particular purpose? But I think their examination of it is going to be really pretty much limited to because it can't be based on sales that have been made. You know, the 88 million doesn't justify the sales. That's why Aquaria is losing money. I would think it would probably have to be based on what are the assets that you're getting. And those assets are the plant, the real estate, the pipeline, the permits. And uh, that's about it. And my, my, my other question to the mayor is basically, have we not asked these folks, I mean, we know that they're supposed to be producing X, Y, and Z gallons of, uh, millions of gallons of water per day. Why would the city not ask them to, for instance, to full throttle this thing and basically produce that amount for maybe a period of one month, not just, not just a, not just a couple of days here and there, to see if the plant, and if in, in, in reality, if they can't really bring that up to uh, what the contract would be, well, if you did, nobody, we, we are not aware of it. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, but it, that, that, that is a fair question, Counselor, and the answer to your question is over the period of the end of the month of June, or I guess maybe the middle of the month of June into July, for about a month, a little bit longer, I think, we did ask that facility to ramp its, its production up to three and a half million and sustain it for that period and they were able to do it. They did? Yes. I think here. Yes. Quality of water was fine, plant plant produced and met met the obligation. And another question, uh, and this is my last question, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've all known that this um, this company has not fulfilled its its side of the contract. Um, in a city that litigates everything and we had this discussion during the budget, uh, Mr. Nazarella, we, we litigate just about everything. Why is it that we have not um, taken these folks to court and say, look, you know, you, you agreed to do X, Y, and Z to promote this particular plant, and you haven't done that as a means of even possibly getting out of this contract altogether? Because if they, because one, I can't see um, us going to court with somebody and basically the judge saying, you know, uh, you haven't done your part, but it's okay because you're, you're, you're the good guys. Uh, why hasn't the city actually done anything in terms of going after these folks to do what they're supposed to do? We have. We examined all of those issues and whether or not that would be a litigious avenue to go down and would be successful in it. And we've made the determination it would not be because it wasn't that salient enough of the, 
a point of the contract that would result in what we believe to have been a breach of the contract. That was my opinion. I had outside counsel come in that are prof professors of contract law. They did not feel that that point, even if we proved to be correct, would be enough to breach that contract. And there was also some information that uh, we were led to believe that there was certain activity and promotion that the, um, the Aquaria had done. However, the, in, I guess in, in direct languages, there weren't any customers out there to pick up on additional contracts. So taking all of the circumstances together, our conclusion was that if we went down that road, we would again spend substantial monies in litigation, but we didn't feel there was a, um, a high level of success in, in resolving an issue in that fashion. So if you have a contract and you say, I'm going to spend $250,000 a year to promote this plant and I don't do it, you don't have any, you don't have any grounds to go after them for it? I didn't say anything? there weren't any grounds. I didn't say based on the information we had both sides from what we understood uh, Aquarius work had, and the activity had been done in promoting that, the fact that there were no neighboring customers out there in what our chances and expectations of a judge finding that there was a significant enough breach to cancel the contract, rescind it or revoke it, we didn't feel that circumstance was in front of us. And you still feel that today? Yes. That we don't have any grounds to go after these folks for anything? We have, again, not grounds that would result in rescission of the contract. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have thank any more you. questions. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor, any other questions pertaining to, uh, pertaining to this issue? Councillor uh, Rodriguez, uh, motion? Uh. Well, I'd like to make a motion to recommend this favorably to the uh, full f City Council. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. This re resolve goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council uh, to be heard favorably. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and others that uh, spoke this evening on this uh, matter. Councilors, we're going to go back to item number three, I believe it was, and we left that off because it was Councilor Stewart's re resolve and Councilor Stewart is here. Madam Clerk, if you want to read that, please. Order that the City of Brockton Government Study Committee is hereby established to be comprised of seven citizens of the city, three of whom are to be appointed by the mayor and four of whom are to be appointed by the city council president. Each committee member shall be a registered voter and to the extent possible possess expertise or knowledge relevant to the work of such government study committee. The GSE is charged with exploring by whatever means it deems appropriate all aspects of local government organization and structure the strengths and weaknesses in the Brockton's current form of government and areas for improvement, alternative models of government and recommend changes in such organization and structure, including but not limited to the terms of office and the method of selection of officials consistent with the needs of the city and designed to achieve greater efficiency and effectiveness in delivery of government services. Council Stewart. Mr. Chairperson, I'd like to have uh, this um, continue to the first finance meeting in December. I am. As you may be aware, making calls to my colleagues to uh, make revisions to uh, this order, and I haven't gotten to everyone yet. Okay. Okay. Do I have on the answer? motion? Do I on the motion. Second, first, to go back to second. Second. Like the motion was made, and the second on the motion. Comes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. What time is that going to be at, uh, Council? What time will that? Hopefully, it will start when I get here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded that this particular item will be referred to the first finance committee meeting uh, in December. Finance committee start at 7 p.m. <laughs> but in any case, we'll, we'll refer to that, uh, that meeting there. And the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the first meeting, the uh, finance committee uh, uh, for the first one in December. Uh, Jim? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, actually wanted to take a moment of privilege uh, for a moment just to discuss something um, that I was, I was made aware of it last year, but this year I think that we can really do this as a city and, and get involved. It's a nationwide effort. And I'm not sure how many men have heard of No Shave November? No? Okay. Well, on the Today Show, uh, the men of the Today Show, they participate in No Shave November, and what it is is that they make a pledge to not shave all the month of November, they just let the hair grow wild. And um, while they do that, they bring awareness to uh, cancer and to particular cancers that affect men um, and, and young men, older men, 
all of these things that, I mean, just, you know, generally I would not kind of have a pulse on. Um, but I wanted to see, I actually wanted to put a challenge out to uh, my male colleagues, uh, to our uh, chief executive officer of our city, to take the pledge to go into No Shave November. And um, let's see, I'm just going to read a little bit. No Shave November is a unique way to raise uh, cancer awareness. It's a way, uh, what better way to grow awareness than to grow some hair? Uh, show your support by giving back. And uh, what it does, it's, it, the goal is uh, to grow awareness by embracing your hair, which many cancer patients lose uh, during their struggle. And uh, what the idea is, you know, at the end, to donate any of the monies that you would have spent to get a shave and, you know, shower and shave or whatever you guys do, uh, you, you donate that to a particular uh, cancer research fund. And what I did, I actually contacted Paolo Gomes today, of, uh, who works at the Good uh, Samaritan Hospital, and he has put me in contact with a few oncologists doctors that are willing to do a forum, a seminar uh, this month. We're looking at probably at the week of November 17th, but I can definitely get back on that and just have all the guys come together, um, hairy face and all, and just kind of discuss and, and just become more aware of their health and men's health. A lot of times it gets ignored, it gets pushed to the side. A lot of guys don't pay attention to it until, unfortunately, it's too late. So I wanted to, to definitely do that and put that challenge out there for the folks at home and, and Again, like I said, for our coll my colleagues here, I hope you will take that plunge and, and, and just you know, explain to your bosses and that you're doing it for a good cause if they request a, a clean shaven face. I see Councilor Stewart is already, he's already on it, so good for you, there you go. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I, I did that. And, and I will- and the, mayor, uh, the mayor usually is right behind me, he's already got a little something going there, oh, there too, you right? Go. right, Mayor? Excellent, and Nick, Nick has it, there you go. Excellent. So I just wanted to put that pledge out there. I hope you guys will do it, and I will um, follow up with uh, the date and time for the Men's Health Forum. And I um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Stadinsky. Mr. Chairman, if I might have a moment of personal yes, privilege. You may. privilege. Thank you. I'd like to announce a ward meeting, Ward 4, November 12th, 7 p.m., Davis School. I already have uh, Mr. Raleigh, who's going to be there, the DPW Commissioner, uh, Officer. Healy from the police department will be there if there's an interest for any type of crime watch, crime prevention item. And I'm going to be looking for some other guests that I've been trying to contact that have, uh, at that meeting. But it will be November 12th, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. at the Davis School. And uh, I already took the pledge this morning, <laughs> and uh, I'm all for it. To include my legs, I will not share my legs either, I told you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. Again, that's Wednesday evening, November 12th at 7 p.m., Davis School for a Ward uh, 4 meeting. Councilors, uh, just before we conclude, um, tomorrow is Election Day. It's November the 4th. Polls open at 7 a.m., close at 8 p.m. Tomorrow's the day when all voices can be heard. Hopefully, everybody will get out and vote. Best wishes to all of uh, those that are involved uh, tomorrow, including our Councilor from Ward 6 who couldn't be here this evening. Best wishes to her as well. But just remember, tomorrow is the big day. So from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., the polls are open for election. Anything else to come before this finance uh, meeting? Seeing none, <laughs> meeting's adjourned. Let's do it. Let's get those hairy faces out now. <laughs> I want to see hair. Yes,